Hey everybody, this is Eleanor with Eleanor's Elite Radio, and I'm so very excited today. Um, we have on one of my most favorite, favorite performers, uh, Mr. Michael Carbonaro. Hey! Hey! How hey. Are Hello, you? Eleanor. Oh, it's so wonderful. I'm so happy that you um, took the time to give me a quick shout out. Um, sure thing, have, yeah. Thank- now, I hear you're touring. You have your new tour, 2019. Mm-hmm. And how many yes. cities are you are are you going to? We've got about forty five shows in a uh, different city um, each time. Yeah, and I think you're coming. I, I'm not thinking. I know you're coming to the King Center, uh, April thirteenth. That's, right. That's right. Yep, seven p.m. Seven p.m. Uh, for an all ages show, and I love playing Florida. We're doing a whole stretch over there in Florida, so. That's really exciting. It um, is. Florida crowds are really, I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, I've performed everywhere, and for some reason, I, I always just absolutely love Florida audiences. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Now, I know you're a local Long Island boy. I am also uh-huh. from Long Island. And, All right. Yeah, and I read your bio and found out that you also went to Connecticut High School, which is where I graduated from. Get out of here. I swear to you. But, honey, believe me, darling, it's it's a few years difference. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, oh, okay, because I was like, I didn't remember seeing you in homeroom. No. What, what year did you graduate? I graduated in 94. <laughs> That's very cute. I graduated <laughs> in, <laughs> in 1977. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's so wonderful that such a, I don't know how many people out of Bohemia or Oakdale really became very as famous as you are. Uh, I want to tell my audience, of course. Um, well, you know, there's Jane, in my, in my class, actually, well, actually, maybe a class under me, uh, Jane Monheit is a really successful, uh, jazz musician. Right. So that was another one that was really. Really? No, I haven't, yep. I didn't hear anything about, like, again, like I'm talking from my era, from the 70s. Right. Era. Oh, sure. Okay. I didn't hear about too many people, you know, believe it uh-huh. or not, here from Florida, from where I am, Melbourne, Florida, we have a lot of, seems to be, uh, reality TV stars that have made it quite big from Melbourne area. Like, wow. I, yeah, I, it's unbelievable. I don't know what Melbourne has with reality, but they, they've all yeah. made it very, very big. Anyway. It's such a I, crazy term, isn't it? Reality it, television. I still, cause <laughs> my, my show, The Carbonaro Effect yeah. is actually considered reality television. Is it really? Yeah. I, which is so weird cause it's magic, which is like, isn't that everything but reality? Everything <laughs> but reality. And I also heard that you, uh, are uh, also an actor, which I you have to act also, I think, to be, you have to be, I think, very well-rounded when you are a big magician like you are. And you were on Grey's Anatomy. I, I can't uh-huh. believe it. I had to Google it and find it. Because um, yeah. I'm a big Grey's Anatomy fan. I didn't see it. You were on CSI Miami, 30 Rock. That's right. So, yeah. and happily divorced, which I didn't see either, and I had trouble finding it. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, I want to ask you, of course, I'm sure everybody asks you these questions, but like, who is your favorite magician? Who have you, who do you look up to? Well, my biggest influence in magic was, without a doubt, David Copperfield. Okay. Um, he was my first, uh, you know role model of what a showman could be, you know, an entertainer who, you know, would talk to the audience, you know, a magician's a really interesting kind of a performer because, you know, you're talking directly to the crowd, like a host, you know, there's a broken fourth wall, but then you go into these little like moments and David's show, he would go from being really dramatic and having these really stunning and dramatic, dangerous and wild illusions and then he'd be a total goofball and just make people laugh and be really silly and he was always right in the moment right with the people and you it just felt so electric and i i was just so drawn to that performance style so yeah he was he was my man he was your man and you know you really i don't know if you if i'm sure you know it but you do the same thing you bring people in uh to whatever it is you're doing i mean you're so Fabulous. And we watch you religiously. I watch you on loop on true TV. He's on his new shows are on Thursday nights, guys, at 10 o'clock p.m. And for you AT&T users, that's channel for high definition 1164. Everything Uh else you'll have to look up because I'm not familiar with all the other channels. But 
Um, right. You just wonderful. yeah. On, tr- on True TV, they're just they're airing them like crazy. We have a whole bunch of aside from the uh, hidden camera episodes that come out. There's also like a spin-off show called Inside Carbonaro where I kind of give extra yes, facts and scenes show some that have never been extra seen. footage. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I love it. And uh, you're also streaming through Netflix. So if, if somebody, yeah. let's say, doesn't have cable TV, they can always find your shows on Netflix as well. Yep. All right, guys, I just want to let and everybody... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, you know, and it's so great, too, because, you know, with, with the being on Netflix as well, it, it really opens up the audiences that come to see me perform live, which is so really great. I love meeting people who are fans of the show. You know, I, I hear such nice things about families watching the show together and how it's really the only thing on television that they can kind of bond over, you know, and, right. and not, not that it's a kiddie show, you know, that they can watch with their kids, but that it really is a show that hits people at different ages on different levels, but it's really a bonding experience. And I'm finding the same awesome kind of energy out there in the live audiences when they come to see the show. Right. And you do involve your audiences, which I read a a little bit about your tour too. Oh yeah. It's going to be very involved. Yeah. People come up on stage to help out with different tricks. I go right out there into the crowd and perform things right there. And, you know, aside from it just being a really great time and, and being you know, they do get pranked. They are definitely wondering what is reality and what is not when they come to the live show. I think also people, even if they're huge fans of the show, kind of probably secretly wonder if what they're seeing on television is legit. You know, like, is this really able to happen? So when they come to the live show and I'm doing some of those things right there on stage in front of them, they feel really, you know, vindicated. And they're almost like testing you in a way because I know when I watch you every evening, Every evening, my husband and I have, you know, a little bit of a disagreement because I assume I know what you're doing until he proves me wrong at every episode. Um, What blows me away, my my favorite tricks, I have to tell you some of them because I, I just was so enamored when you agreed to do the interview that I really have to tell you some of my favorite tricks are the, uh, chocolate cake where the, um, the syrup just kept flowing out out of the cafe. Oh, yeah. I forgot the name of it. Oh, um, yeah. I, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also did one, the esophageal um, exfoliator, where you oh, swallow right. the balloon. Oh, that's unbelievable. Right. Totally silly. Oh, my gosh. That was funny. And so does it, how much time does it take to work up each, each trick or illusion? Well, you know, time is you know, very limited. I mean, we've made, we're going on to our hundredth episode now. So we've done so many, and I say weeks, I have an awesome team of magicians that, you know, work with me behind the scenes. And sometimes if you're a big fan of the show, you see, they come on as like secret accomplices sometimes. Um, and, uh, man, we're just really under the wire to just create really quickly and really figure out how to do it and practice it as fast as possible and, and get shooting to make episodes. So it's, It's sort of like a ring of fire. It really is taking all the skill sets that I know from different tricks and different methods that I know and try and trying to reinvent them and use techniques that we know, uh, you know, put through different stories and different effects. And, um, the answer is zero. We have zero practice time. I mean, it's, it really is just, it's just as you see it. It's that's, but that's what I think makes you just so fabulous. Really. Um, uh, just so fabulous. I want to ask a question. Uh, okay. I read somewhere on the internet that there were rumors that you had a twin brother. Right. Yes. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. I answer that one a lot. I do. Know, I do have a brother. I have an older brother um, that does not look like me. We're not twins, and he's never been on the show. Too bad, because if it was true, you would have gone down in history like Houdini. Because oh yeah, oh I my know. Gosh. What I, could you imagine? What I could have do? Had a- oh my gosh. <laughs> God, it would have been flawless. I'd had to ask because it's just out there. And a lot of people, yep. a lot of my fans had wrote to me, um, uh, direct messaged me and said, ask him if he has a brother. Ask him if he has a yep. twin brother. 
Oh my and God. so funny you say that too, because we just did these new promos for True TV where they were doing that sort of like screen they wanted to do just for, for a commercial for the, the new show called Double Takes, where I show like um, people who've been fooled with some of your favorite tricks, but different people that you haven't seen their reactions. Like maybe they weren't the one I chose for the show that night, right. but they also had a great reaction. So we revisit some of those and it's called Double Takes. So the whole theme was, oh, let's put Michael standing next to himself, talking to himself. And then as soon as we were <laughs> shooting these commercials, I'm like, oh my gosh, everybody's going to go see i knew he had a twin brother there he is talking to him right there on the screen well that would be so awesome was, too i think i think that would be great yeah, um, i guess it'll just make people further absolutely wonder. michael uh i know to being doing magic is in your heart but if since you I, I see you graduated or you went to nyu you studied drama and you went to other theater schools as well but what I would love to know is if you were offered, because you, your acting skills um, really are dynamic, and I was wondering if you were offered a gig, a long acting gig, would you consider it, or is magic your heart, your soul, and your passion? Um, no, I would absolutely consider it, and I, I, I you know, throughout my career, I've, I'm lucky to have been able to kind of do both back and forth. It, it's sort of been my almost... Uh, secret like confusion in my own mind is like do I want to be a magician do I want to be an actor I like so many aspects so I I kind of stopped really trying to answer the question and just said you know what I'm taking things as they come each new project that I do I am looking for something that there's a hook for me to do it Um, I love doing comedy on television If, if something came around that was the right role you know and I I've done a lot of hidden camera magic on television now so it could be time to try something new and and take a path well, so it, I'm looking it, into some other theater projects I love horror movies so I'm a big fan of special effects and makeup and you know I'm very excited that some of the new you know some of my favorite TV shows are being remade and we're looking into like getting to work with some of them like the Twilight Zone is being redone and yeah. Creep Show is being redone and those are things I definitely want to get my hands on and and uh, get involved with. Very wonderful. Um, let me ask you another question. Do you have a favorite trick or illusion? Or are you not partial because you love everything? No, I, I actually might, for some reason, and I don't know what it is, but the one that really just gets right to my heart is the one trick that I performed in a hardware store <laughs> where I had a little jar of beetles and I convinced the guy that and this is just an ordinary guy just shopping in a hardware store, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. I convinced him that these little beetles were able to like construct things, like they, they <laughs> right in front of him, yeah. underneath a coffee can. These beetles apparently <laughs> formed a, a whole toothpick structure of the <laughs> Eiffel Tower. <laughs> And it it was a really weird thing, and I loved it so much because the guy was such an ordinary guy in such an ordinary place, such a bizarre story, but then it had this really cool hook, like, he started to believe it because I was talking about how, you know, spiders create these really intricate and elaborate webs. I saw that one, I saw that one not too long ago. Yeah. That's like one that I would be fooled by because I'm like, you know what? It's true. Spiders really do make those things. I guess maybe beetles can construct a tower. What do I know? Oh, so I... I just love that one. He have turned you... from just like a skeptical man into like a child. His mouth dropped open. And man, I just love that one. You do have a lot of jaw dropping moments. Have you yeah. ever had anyone get so frightened that they kind of became a little ill, like for real? Yes. There's been a number of tricks, and again, like saying that I love special effects and horror movies and stuff, so some of our themes, you know, uh, of some of the tricks definitely go into the creepy, you know, possible ghost, and maybe there's a voodoo voodoo going on. Exactly. So people do get really nervous, and there's been a number of them where it's really riding on that line of keeping them in the moment, trying to keep them calm, and trying to get all of the trick out and then get to the reveal and let them know it's just a show before they beat the heck out of me, you know? (laughs) The one I saw yesterday was with um, an African-American man and you guys were in a warehouse and you take this big carton off a shelf and it had a finger coming through it. And then when you opened it, it was a pig. And he he really thought, like, he was so frightened. He really thought it was like voodoo related. Like, I bet a lot of people really get scared sometimes, I would imagine. 
Absolutely, they do. Yeah, uh, and it's a, it's a really amazing what you you know. We think we know so much. We're such an advanced species, but boy, you know, you see a finger and then you see a pig, and you go, "All right, it's true. There's such a thing as voodoo. I'm out of here." You know, like you just believe it. Hey guys, I just want to remind everybody, please, who's listening, uh, you can always catch reruns on Netflix. Um, the Carbonaro Effect, and you can watch him Thursdays on True TV. And also, he's coming to the King Center right here in Melbourne, uh, April 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, tickets are available through the King Center, and all you got to do is type in Michael Carbonaro, and you'll absolutely, uh, you'll pull up um, ticket centers. Uh, that's um, www.kingcenterfortheperformingarts.com.